District and Dan Belight in the fourth. Whatever election is going on in your area, ask the candidates where they stand on this issue. They need, this needs to be brought up. They need to hear from somebody. They need people in the audience asking them and also letters to the editor's column. Your audience, you believe what you're saying. He does that, I try to. There are local public policy questions on the ballot all across the state. I just did! Awesome. Plus, the mic can one of the reasons we hit that. Oh, thank you. Let's hear, let's hear a big round for you guys. The people are at the people's event. Derek, get over here. You're supposed to be filming for me. Let's hear a game for the people. For you. Because of you, we're going to legalize marijuana in Massachusetts. Because of you, this event is bigger than ever. Because of you, nobody's being arrested today. For me. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm up here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to bring the next speaker up and tell you a little bit about why she's here and what she does. She's come all the way from D.C. to Boston, where she travels all over the country. She goes to Portland. She goes to Seattle. She goes to all states of the country to speak about someone who's no longer here. You might wonder why she might speak about this person. Well, if you look into who this person was, the words he wrote, the actions he did, the changes that he made on this world, that's why she speaks about this man. His name is Peter McWilliams. How many of you know Peter McWilliams? There's a few. Not enough. You should listen. Go home or do it right now. Look up his YouTube speech where he spoke of the Libertarian Party about medical marijuana and how it helped him and the war that the federal government through the DEA had on his life yeah. and how he fought back and he had lines like, don't tread on this faggot. He spoke back and he actually died for his cause. He died. I didn't know a lot about Peter McWilliams. I had seen him on some of the big, big uh, television shows like Politically Incorrect, but I didn't know. I hadn't read the words. I haven't seen that speech, and I, and I really want to ask you, please look up that speech. It touched my heart. It touches many people's hearts that see it, so look up the speech of Peter McWilliams gave. The reason I found these things was because of this person talking, educating, promoting the work of Peter McWilliams. I'm very happy to introduce her to the stage. You look her up on Facebook, Peter's page. Look up PeterMcWilliams.org for all his words, his books, his writings. He was a best-selling author. He was a gay rights activist. He was the forefront of medical marijuana in this country, in California. He was one of the people who started everything that's here today. So let's hear it right now for the work of Peter McWilliams, for getting his word out, and for this lady right here, Julia Peters Page, Julia Rose. Let's hear it! Thank you, Mr. Kane. That was an awesome introduction. While alive, live. Those words were spoken by a man who knew the meaning. Peter McWilliams was born outside of Detroit in Michigan. He went on to publish his first poem at the age of 17. From then, this man self-published over 40 books Five of them New York Times bestsellers. Yeah. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I'll hear some more of that. Yeah. Got some more like it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and Peter was an amazing libertarian. In 1993, he wrote the book Ain't Nobody's Business If You Do, which is a book that many libertarians today feel is their Bible including Judge Jim Gray, who will be here today. He and Gary Johnson. Oh my goodness, there you are. Hi, Judge. There he is, everybody. Judge Gray. Woo! Oh my goodness, what an honor. Judge Gray, along with Gary Johnson, both believe in ending this war on prohibition. They both care about Peter's story because guess what? It's still happening today. In 1996, Peter was diagnosed with both AIDS 
and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, as if having one wasn't bad enough, he found that cannabis helped heal him in a way nothing ever did. I don't know if any of you are patients, but this man had 12 pages, side effects of drugs he was taking. This man who wrote all those books could barely keep his medication down and spent every day vomiting all the time, nothing else, and then he discovered cannabis. That cannabis gave him creativity and he went on to write another bestseller. exposing the DEA. He was jailed for 30 days without his medicine. What do you think of that, guys? Are you not outraged by that? Exactly. 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 And this wonderful, kind, gentle healing man ended up dying at the young age of 50. 50, folks. Way too young. So I'm here to celebrate Peter, and I feel that he is here among us at the Boston Freedom Rally. Please donate to the cause of Mass Can. Please pick up your trash. And this one is for Peter. Peter, where you go, my heart follows too. I will always be moved by you, your heart, your art and poetry. You love of life and the beauty. Thank you very much. Remember Peter the Queen, the true American patriot. Thank you. Thank you. It's a referen the referendum this fall for full legalization. Get yourself involved in those campaigns. You can do it from here in Massachusetts. You can get involved in. Cheers. Hi, guys. A lot of stuff to jump over this late in the day. Woo. How we all doing? Still good? Good man. I think I'm talking about. I need some water. You guys need to drink some water too. All right. So we have one more speaker, and of course, this speaker is going to be very special. And once again, for a very special speaker, we need a very special introduction. So I'm going to bring on Miss Julia Rose. Miss Julia Rose is with PeterMcWilliams.org. And when I first introduced her on stage, this stage, to speak. I introduced her as the only person fighting to keep the memory of Peter McWilliams alive. Uh, and through all of her work, that's not the case anymore. There are yeah. many, many people out there who know who Peter McWilliams is. Julia Rose. Woo! Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Dexter. It is such an honor to be co-introducing your honor, Judge Jim Gray. That's right. Yes, Judge Jim Gray is amazing. He cares about patients. He cared about Peter's story. He cares about every patient out there. And I firmly believe that Gary Johnson, Judge Jim Gray, is the only way to go to repeal prohibition, and they care about medical cannabis patients. So this November, you vote with your heart and your conscience, Gary Johnson, and here he is, your honor, Judge Jim Gray. Vice President of Kennedy. Hey, this is big time. This is really important stuff. And I must confess to all of you, I'm a former drug warrior. I was a Navy JAG attorney. I was also a federal prosecutor in Los Angeles and prosecuted drug crimes. It took me until I was a judge in California on the trial court to see what was happening, why our laws of drug prohibition have failed. You look at what is happening. The United States of America leads the world in the incarceration of its people. Are we evil or what? The answer is the laws are wrong and the laws must change. Yeah. Better than that, the laws must change now. This November, we can do this. But it won't happen without your work. You take this personally. You spread this word out to your email world 
to your friends, to people you don't even know. Get them out there and tell them. There are initiatives on the ballot in three states. Colorado. How many people here know people that vote in Colorado? Talk to them. Get this word out. What state of Washington? How many people know people that vote in the state of Washington? Get this word out. And the state of Oregon. Same thing. How many people know people that vote in Massachusetts? I hope all of you. Let's get measure three passed. Critically important. You know something? There is no reason why marijuana should not be legal. How many of you agree? If you agree, repeat after me. There is no reason why marijuana should not be legal. What did you say? Let's do it again and mean it because we've got to get these votes out. There is no reason why marijuana should not be legal. Now let me tell you the truth. We are facing something critically important in this election. We have President Obama, we have Governor Romney, you can vote for either one of them and mar medical marijuana dispensaries will not be in our country within a year or two. They're the same. I call them Robomni. They're identical. There is survival at hand. It's called Governor Gary Johnson. The former governor of the state of New Mexico. A good man. Let me tell you, while I was a judge in Orange County, California, I held a press conference based upon what I had seen in my own courtroom and said to the world, this law of drug prohibition is not working, we must change it. And I've been speaking about this publicly ever since. 1999, Governor Gary Johnson, while the governor of New Mexico, conducted what he called his own audit and reached the same conclusion and still held his press conference and said, the drug laws are not working, we must change them. This man has courage, this man has integrity, and this is a man of action. Governor Gary Johnson is running for President of the United States right now. He honored me by asking me to be his running mate and I said I will do this on one condition and that is we run to win. None of this moral victory stuff, none of this let's make a good showing, none of this let's plan for the future. We're going to run in the year 2012, November 6th, and we're going to win. No, I said we're going to win. You have to take this personally, folks. You can do this. You register to vote. There are lots of voter registration booths around. By the way, I'm a member of LEAP, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Been speaking with them for years. LEAP has a, a table over here. Go visit them. Normal, National Organization Reform of Marijuana Laws, has a couple of tables. Go support them. Good people. And, of course, Governor Gary Johnson, Judge Jim Gray have a table as well. You gotta take this personally. No lethargy. You gotta get out there. Tell the world. You tell that world of yours to tell their world as well. We get in the debates, we win. We get in the debates, we will make Romney and Obama discuss issues they do not want to discuss, like marijuana legalization. They don't want to discuss it. What do they want to do? They want to change the subject. Don't let them do it. So that's the deal. We're going to do this with your help. You take it personally, you get your friends, your family, your acquaintances to take it personally, and it's going to happen. Is there any reason why we should not be able to do things like this all around the country? None whatsoever. Is there any violence here? Is there any form of unhappiness? No. Let's let this be repeated here in Boston Commons and all around the country. Governor Gary Johnson is the guy. I'm proud to be his running mate. Governor Gary Johnson, Libertarian for President, 2012. Thank you. Let's get this thing done. Give it up for Judge Gray! Vice presidential candidate on stage at the Freedom Rally. We're broadcasting. Give it up for the people that
that are listening at home, let yeah. me know there's some folks out here that give a damn about legalization and medical cannabis. The dog is after something. We can and this is Brown, one of our elected officials on the radio this morning. He's saying, I know the state question three is good for Massachusetts. Yeah. Hey, he's saying, I don't think it's right. And then they asked him if he ever smoked cannabis when he was a youngster. And he said, I don't think it's appropriate for you to ask me a question like that. That's an elected official. That's an elected official.